Hey there, it's Angie Coley, and today I am coming to you from uh, lovely sunny Memphis, Tennessee, with a little bit of a rant. Now, this one is my own fault because I know better than to get into arguments with strangers on the internet, but please, if you have gotten any kind of value out of anything that I have said at all over the amount of time that I've been preaching and ranting on the internet, pay attention to this one, all right? Because ego is a business killer. Ego is a career killer. And that is precisely why you need to do your best to just snuff that bad boy out. Whenever you feel your hackles rise and like, oh my god, no, I'm right. There's no way this person paid me for my expertise. They need to listen to what I have to say. They don't have to listen to shit. I'm sure we've all been in situations where we hired someone and when they came to a to us with a recommendation, something in our gut was like, no, that doesn't feel right. I really don't want to do that. Uh, that's the beauty of working with humans because you can always count on human to human. Human's going to human, which means they're not always going to respond to persuasion, respond to logic, do the thing that you predict that, that they'll do with any consistency. All you've got is that relationship with that person. And when you come at that relationship from a place of ego of I'm right, you're wrong, you're already setting up a wall between you that may just become impossible to scale, may be impossible to get over. Uh, that wall's going to have to come down at some point or you're just going to have to let that relationship go. So ego is a business killer. And I know that this is ironic coming from someone that teaches confidence for entrepreneurs because to some extent, yeah, you have to have a healthy ego to be in business for yourself. You have to be confident that you're making the right decision, that you're coming at a, a customer or a client problem from the best possible intentions and the best possible solutions that you've got. And you've got to feel like you can really help them. So, like, But confidence and ego, I think, are separate and distinct, even though there's a little bit of overlap. Because ego comes from that entrenched position of... I'm right, you're wrong. And there's a couple things wrong with that because, <laughs> trust me, I hear the irony. My ego is right. Your ego is wrong. Um, actually, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'm going to recap what got me all fired up today. And that was seeing a conversation in, a, in an entrepreneurial group this morning where someone was being a little bit antagonizing and entrenched in a question that they asked. So basically they asked a question, they made an observation, a bunch of people pointed out that, that there's multiple ways to look at this. Here's one example, here's one example. And this person just really dug in their heels and argued. Um, and I made a joke about, you know how I can tell you're new? <laughs> and this person was like, what makes you think I'm new? And I'm like, because I recognize all of these assumptions and these arguments from when I was a couple years in. And trust me, like, I get it. It's only natural to fall into that position of like, yep, I got the wins behind me. I think I'm doing pretty well at this. So let me show you how it's done. Thankfully, at that point in time, I had some experienced mentors in my corner who cared very deeply for me and they would not let me go down in a ball of ego driven flames. I am incredibly grateful for that. And I will try my best to be that for you too. Um, when you come up against your ego, it's pretty painful and you got to kill that part of yourself because when your ego kicks into overdrive, you shut down all possibility of learning and growth and the fact that there might be multiple solutions to one problem. In fact, that's pretty much the way I view every potential problem out there in the world, that there's multiple solutions to any given problem. Some of them might work even better than the one that I'm proposing. But you've, by the same token, you've got to be able to narrow down all the choices and not get paralyzed by analysis paralysis and kick into action. So, yeah, you, you've got to be open to the possibility that there's a better way to do this. Um, because often there is. There really just is. That's, that's the nature of humans and innovation. And... Uh, when you become entrenched in the method of this is the right way to do this, this is the right approach, this is the right philosophy, my mindset is right, you become entrenched in the way of doing things. And this is how industries die. Think blockbuster. Think 
Circuit City. Think the massive shift to online. Now we kind of laugh at those guys. Why didn't they just get with the times? Ego. Somebody up there at the top said, nope, look at us. We're too big to fail. This is the way that we've always done things. I don't see a need to change. Changing is going to be too expensive, too time consuming. Who cares if the customer has indicated that they clearly want to move in this direction? This is what we do. You miss an opportunity to shift with what your people actually want to do because you've made an assumption about what's correct. And then the industry moves and you're stuck still swimming in this lane when we were going that way. You get left behind. I've seen it happen. I was literally part of a company with a hundred retail stores that got shut down. An entire hundred store retail chain shut down. And I'm still convinced to this day that that was an ego problem because the team, us peons that were doing the actual marketing and the sales, you know, I, I once wrote an email sequence that brought in almost $10 million and I got yelled at for doing it without permission, for saying words that some of the executives disagreed with. Um, and there was nothing controversial or risque about what I wrote. It was a simple heartfelt approach, but it was wrong. So they didn't want me to run it again. And ego, like I said, will entrench you, will convince you that you are right, will deceive you into making choices that aren't necessarily for your best because you've got to protect that ego and, and make sure that you feel good about the work that you do. And you can't be wrong. Heaven forbid you ever wrong in business. Um, I'm wrong all the time, guys. And yet, here I am, still running a business, still coaching with students. It's amazing how that works, that you don't have to be perfect to be a human being that has a successful business. And uh, that actually brings me to point number three. If you let your ego take over and drive this business for you, you become really difficult to work with. And I got news for you. If you have never considered this possibility before, people like working with people they like. If they like you, if they're genuine fans of the work that you do and they like the attitude and the approach and everything that you've put together, they will become fans. They'll buy your books. They'll come to your trainings. They will support you and they will evangelize you just for being yourself. But if you come across as that, and I mean, there are certain exceptions that are rich jerk and, and all those guys, but I see a big shift toward authenticity versus posturing. And ego really contributes, I think, to posturing. Like there's, I don't do anything wrong. Look at me, follow me and you will be right. You will never hear a guarantee from Angie Coley's lips that if you do everything that I say, everything will turn out right. Because you know what? Life doesn't work like that. There are almost 8 billion of us on this planet at this point. All of us have figured out how to live a life. Your version of life and business might be different from mine. But I can share some perspective on what I've done in my life that worked for me in hopes that it might help you. And if it resonates with you, great. Try that thing. Let me know how it turns out. I really hope that you get some success out of it. I hope you get even more success than I got out of it. And if it doesn't feel good in your gut, I don't want you to try that thing. I want you to try something that feels good to you. I don't have to be right. I want you to win, whether it's with me or someone else. That is letting go of your ego. And I'm not saying that I won't have, you know, to be human is to uh, get self-centered from time to time. And I'm not saying that I won't ever have the ego rise up. But I try to remember those three points that when it kicks in and I feel this need to be right and people have to listen to me and like, I am the guru, which please don't. If you know me and you love me, please understand that if I say the word guru, I have been kidnapped by pod people. That's just not my thing. If your ego is kicking in, if you are feeling that like back against the wall, I have to be right. Why aren't these people listening to me? Oh my God. Remember these three things. You're shutting down all possibility of growth and learning. You are entrenching yourself and risking potentially being left behind by entire industry shifts. It has happened. Do not think you are immune. The biggest companies have failed because of ego. And then you become difficult to work with, which means that you alienate the people that would have otherwise give you money because you pissed them off because you had to be right. To me, that's not worth it. So to those of you that are new to the industry or you've got just enough years under your belt to be feeling that little cockiness, I know what I'm doing. Everybody needs to listen to me. Time to take a step back, breathe, reach out to the people that care about you. I care about you. Reach out to me. It's fine. Reply to this email. Don't let 
ego kill what would be an otherwise promising entrepreneurial career or regular career if you're not ready to start your business. Murder that ego. It's about time. That's what I've got for you today. Let's go kick some ass.